If you work in one of the following roles, chances are you've got boring, repetitive tasks that need to be done on a routine basis. In this next video, I'm gonna show you how you can utilize VBA macros to literally save hours of time with just a click of a mouse. Let's have a look. So here's the data set we receive every week. You can download it for free in the video description. And we need to do the following tasks. We want to apply formats to the headers. We also want to change the format of these numbers and put them into accounting. We want to add a combination graph to the right hand side, which will tell us what the sales and the profit is for each store. And then finally, we want to add a total here for the sales and the profit. Now, because this task requires the same steps every week, we can automate it using a macro. In this case, we'll use the macro recorder. Think of it almost like a videotape recording each step or keystroke you enter into Excel. To record a macro, you'll need to make sure the developer tab is visible at the top of the ribbon. Now I'm on a Mac, so to do that, we just go up to the top left and select Excel, then select Preferences. On this dialog box here, you'll just choose Ribbon and Toolbar, and on the right hand side here we just need to make sure that the developer tab is selected if you're on windows you'll just need to go anywhere in the ribbon right mouse click and choose customize ribbon you'll get a screen that looks like this and on the right hand side you'll just need to make sure that your developer tab is selected so once you have the developer tab selected you can go across to the left hand side of the screen and just simply choose record macro in this instance we're going to call this format and then we're going to hit OK. Now just a word of warning that any keystrokes or actions you take while the macro is recording will be actually tagged within the macro so it might be best just to practice whatever steps you want to do when you're recording a macro. So what I'm going to do I'm going to select cell A1 then I'm going to control shift and right to select all of my headings then I'm going to select a new format for those so a dark background with a white color. Then I'm just gonna select my sales and profit. So I'm gonna select my sales, which is E1, and then Control, Shift, and Right, and then Control, Shift, and Down. And what I'm gonna do there is I'm just gonna change the number format to accounting and take out my decimals. Finally, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select my store name, which is D1, and then Control, Shift, and Down, Control, Shift and Right. I'm then going to insert a combination graph by going to Insert and then Combo Graph and select that. I'm going to move that up a little bit and just take out my chart title. Once we've done that, we can go back to our Developer tab and then just hit Stop Recording. So that's it. Congratulations if that's your first macro. We've managed to create that in just a couple of minutes. Now let's check to see whether that macro can work in the next week's sales. So if I move along to my next tab and control page down, this is the sales data for week two. To run my macro on this data, I'll just go up to the developer tab and then go across to the left to macro, select my format macro and just select run. So that seems to be working quite well there. Now the final step that we want to do to our macro is to add a total for the sales and the profit. Now I've could have done this when I recorded my macro, but what I want to do is I want to make it dynamic. So if I get extra stores in any particular week, I want to make sure that my total is always at the bottom. Whereas if I had recorded that with the macro recorder, it wouldn't have worked out well. So what I need to do is I need to go into the macro and edit a few lines of code. But don't worry, it's not too scary and it'll only take a few minutes. So what I need to do is if I go up to the developer tab again, go across to the left to macro, but instead of hitting run on our macro, we're just gonna choose step. This brings us through to our VBA screen. This is effectively the code that's used within Excel. You can kind of look at a bit intimidating at first, but we only need to add a few changes and that will really enhance our macro. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're just gonna add a variable that will count the number of rows to the end of our data set. So I'm just gonna paste that code in. My first row basically just declares that the last row is an integer. And what that means is I'm just declaring that as a variable. The last row will effectively be whatever number we assign to the last row. 
So in this case, the last row is equal to cells. And what this formula is doing is it's just counting down the number of rows to the end of our data set. So in our example, I think it had about 14 lines. So the last row will become 14. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna also paste some lines of code down towards the end of our macro. And what we need to do is just make sure it's before this end sub. So this end sub is where the macro effectively finishes. So if I paste my code in just here, so what this is doing is it's effectively just putting in my formula for my two sums in column E and column F. And what it's doing is it's just saying from sum from E2 to E last row. So if last row is 14, it'll be E14, or if last row is 18, it'll be 18, etc. And then finally, all it's doing is I'm just putting a format to my sum totals. So just changing the format of those. And obviously that format will change if depending on where the last row is as well. So if I press save to that and then go back into Excel, if I go into my week three sales data, so if I control page down and again, if I run my macro, so go to the top of my screen, across to the left to macro and then just hit run, we can see it's added in my subtotal there and it's done the rest of my formatting. But let's see actually week four. So if I control and page down. So week four has some additional stores. So the number of rows has increased and is now at 15. So again, if I go to my developer tab, go to my macro and then just hit run. So we can see that that subtotal has now picked up those extra rows and is in the correct place at the bottom of the data set. So that seems to be working quite well. Now the final thing we need to do is just to make sure that any workbook where we've saved a macro in is saved correctly. So what you'll need to do is just make sure that when you save your workbook, that it's saved as a macro enabled workbook. And you need to do that on both Mac and Windows. If you liked that video, check this next one out where you can use Power Query to automate repetitive tasks. Otherwise, I'll catch you on the next video.